Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Restorers and Appreciators and Listeners. Okay, so we're like Kenwood KA 2000 A Part 7. Take a little change in direction. Um, I noticed when I was testing it, so I put the power supply parts in, the new caps and everything, and the voltages are fine, but the source tape switch is very, very noisy, and spraying it isn't helping. I've run into this before. I did a video like three or four years ago on these switches and how to fix them. Um, but then we also need to get at the transistors and caps under this tone control board. So I took this as, you should always take one repair as an opportunity to do other things. So I took off the face plate cleaned it, used a little Mother McGuire's um, scratch compound on it and wax. Um, it's got some wear on it, but it's still really nice and not really chipped or dented on the corners, which is great. The knobs, which are kind of gooey, you know, from nicotine, um, they're actually soaking in some uh, dish soap. So I'm going to show you what you got to do to take this apart. Because I know some people that look at this, and this is a very, I've seen this same setup, many different brands, where they'll have the volume control, the selectors, some switches mounted by themselves, others are on a board which is upside down. So you need your trusty soldering iron, and take a picture of it. Okay, that's the best thing. Take a picture where the wires go used to be you had to use a Polaroid camera and make a diagram. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take the wires off. Give them a little melt. Like that. And we're just going to go wherever there's the power lead. Hopefully my big arm isn't in your way. I have these big arms. There's my family were railroad workers and cabinet makers and must be some kind of genetic thing. Um, take this off. Just be careful with them. Blue one off. We're almost there. And the two grounds. Lift those off. There we go. Send it back down. And so we just need to take off these nuts. They are usually pretty loosened up at this point. Maybe I should be using a socket on this. There we go. I'm gonna put them back on with a like a deep socket. That's the best way. But for now. I like to have a light toolbox, you know. When I used to work in the car stereo business, we had a number of break-ins at our shop. So I used to take my snap-on box home every night. <laughs> the thing weighed about 70 pounds. I would put it in the trunk of my 72 Mercury Marquee. And one day I'm putting, I drop it in the trunk just a little hard because I was tired. And it went right through onto the ground. The trunk was so corroded in that car. So I actually had to drive over it to get it. And then I took a big piece of plywood and screwed it down for a new trunk floor. Just thought you'd find that funny. Anyway, so we just walk this one out and it's going to be hooked by some wires. There it is. So, I'm going to put the nuts back on. Like that. So we don't lose them. That's why you see cottage cheese containers and stuff and yogurt containers all over my workbench. It's got parts so you don't lose them. Okay show you what's going on with this board. So pretty simple tone control board and there's one transistor in each channel. 
um, and two 10 microfarad electrolytic caps. So it's straight swap for swap. Now this one's had the modification between, I think it's base and base and emitter. There's a 100 picofarad cap that's been added. That's so it doesn't oscillate. So what I actually do is it's in the same holes as the leads. I actually soldered on the bottom then. It just, because the transistor that's here, well I can hardly see that. It's not a C458, it's something else. It's a C631. That's not usually, I think these have been replaced. Because if it would have had a 458, which would have gone noisy. So this is like, actually, you may be able to actually leave those alone. This unit wasn't particularly noisy, but you got the board out. Might as well replace those parts. And then that leaves you with this switch. Now, we're not going to have time in the usual video. That there. I actually made a diagram of the hookup points. I'm going to flip that over so you can see it. The switch is right there, the tape source, and it's going to have to come out and the wires be disconnected. And I actually took a picture of it so we can snip it off. I'm not going to try to desolder it inside the unit. It's just going to make a mess of things if you do that. Just snip it off and then we'll desolder it on the bench. Uh, fix the switch. If it can't be fixed, I actually have a couple of these. Some new old stock ones. Boy, that's gonna be... Get that wire off right there. I'm gonna actually have to loosen it. I can't reach that one without doing damage. That's a nice thing about these older ones. Everything's like screwed in, you know? It's, it's not like it's a it's a cheap, you know how cars are made now, you know, it would be like a couple clips holding the whole dash panel together. And you, you know, you turn, you turn or twist it the wrong way, it's like snap. Anyway. Oh, you come. My ambidextrousness isn't working today. That's just fine. These are kind of hard to grab, this kind of screw. So now we can just kind of pull the switch over and out and get the leads off it. Now sometimes you might have to extend some of these leads. Get them back on. But I mean, we've got to do something about this switch. You don't want to restore the amp and be sitting there with channels dropping out. There it is. So it's out. So what I'm going to do is desolder it. Four little tabs to bend. There's a single piece, there's a contact wafer in there that pivots. And I'm just going to brush it up with a little emery cloth. That's all you need to do. I don't want to make this video go too long because I have covered this before. So then I'll put the switch back in, finish the tone control board, put the face paint back on. That part's done then. Put the knobs back on nice and cleaned up. Then we'll move to the phono board. Thanks for watching and listening.